Do your live in South Africa and want to get the best deals on all the latest gaming products? Well, Robotech is the best place to check out. They have a huge variety of peripherals, PC components, laptops, and just everything else you would need. So go check out robotech.crza to get the products you are looking for at a low price. How's it going everybody? Welcome to We Do Tech. Now for today's review, we are going to take a look at the Asus ROG Swift PG27VQ. Yeah, those names. So starting off, the PG27VQ is currently retailing for around 14,500 Rand on Rebel Tech here in South Africa or $750 on Amazon. Take a look at the screen itself. The PG27 is a curved 27 inch 2560 by 1440p TN panel that can run up to 165 hertz with a one millisecond response time. So none of this 144 hertz nonsense. You can just throw those monitors away. Along with that, it also features a G-Sync and most, most importantly, it has RGB, of course. Now, because it is a TN panel, you won't get the best color accuracy, but it is definitely good enough for gaming and just some basic productivity work. The PG27 has a contrast ratio of 1000 to 1, 1 millisecond gray to gray response time and has a max brightness of 400 nits and does also cover 72 of the NTSC color gamut. Now, another common problem with most TN panels is that they do have a weaker viewing angles. But I found that the PG27 wasn't really that bad. You do get some discoloration when viewing from the sides, but you can still see everything on the screen. Only when looking from the bottom, however, upwards, do you see that the screen gets totally grayed out and you can't really see anything on the display. Also, the screen features an anti-glare coating, so if you do sit in front or next to a window, you won't have any light that shines onto your screen and ruins your experience. But keep in mind that anti-glare does still reflect a light if you shine it close or straight in front of the monitor. So just keep that in mind. As for backlight bleed, the PG27 doesn't have any that you would really notice straight away. You do get some, but honestly, you really have to go looking for it to find it. So for casual and just normal use, you won't really see it at all. Now, something I did really like is that the PG27 has a very thin bezel around the side and at the top at around 8 millimeters. This is going to be great if you want to have a triple monitor setup, if you can afford three of these, but it will work very well. Uh, now, as for the on-screen menu, you're able to access it by using the navigation joystick at the back of the monitor, where there are also four uh, buttons that you can use to close the menu, open up the Game Plus menu, the Game Visual menu, and then also turn off the monitor. Inside the menu, you can adjust features like the blue light filter, color control, display input, and then also many more. Inside the Game Plus menu, you're able to add a dedicated crosshair to the display. Also, you can add an FPS counter and then also you can add a countdown timer if you would really need that. But all of this is just a really nice extra features that you can get and it won't really record on the display if you capture game footage or anything like that. It is directly on the display and you can just turn it off on or off on the display itself. As for the game visual menu, that allows you to quickly switch between uh, the preset picture mode to whatever looks uh, best for you. And then uh, lastly, inside the menu, you can also enable an aura sync for the lighting, which we will get to a bit later, and then also overclock the screen to that 165 hz refresh rate. Just remember to adjust the refresh rate in the display settings as well. Probably one of the first things that you will notice when looking at the PG27 is that tri-legged stand design and then also the red ROG logo shining down on the desk. For the light signature, you are able to replace the ROG one with your own design by customizing one of the included blank covers. However, unfortunately, you only get a red backlight at the moment, so no RGB yet, but hopefully ASUS will add that in the next model. 
The tri-legger design is also quite sturdy, so you don't have to worry about the monitor being accidentally bumped over. It does uh, stabilize uh, very nice. The stand does also feature a few angle adjustments for the display. You're able to swivel, tilt, and also adjust the height of the display, but a no pivot, which isn't really that big of a problem uh, if it was for me. The stand also features a cable management hole, so you are able to neatly hide your cables through that and connect it to your PC. Now the entire stand does also have a very heavy gaming aesthetic look to it which some might like and some might not but it does look fancy nonetheless but now if it's just not for you you are able to mount the monitor to a different stand that is a vase mount compatible or you can just use a triple monitor display and use all three of them of course uh, if you again have the money for that which not a lot of people will but now taking a look at the back I.O., you get an HDMI 1.4 port, display port 1.2 port, a USB 3.0 type a B upstream port, two normal USB 3.0 type A ports, the DC power, and then also a 3.5 millimeter headphone out port. You also get the I.O. panel cover that neatly hides all of the ports and the cables, which is a very nice feature. Included with the monitor, you get a display port, an HDMI cable, and then also a USB 3.0 type A to type a B port. And then of course you get the power adapter. Now getting into the most important part of the entire monitor, that RGB lighting of course. The lighting is only at the back however, and it doesn't really look that crazy. The backlight however is not extremely bright, so if you do position your monitor against the wall, it's not really gonna glow that effect onto the wall where you would actually see it. However, if you do uh, put the monitor on your desk, which is more of an open design, and you can't actually see the back side, you will see that it has a nice cool effect to it, and it's just going to look nice with your setup. Perhaps later on ASUS could make that it is a tiny bit brighter, that it can actually glow against your wall. I think that would look really cool. And then also you don't really need to get an LED strip or any other lighting that would do that. And then perhaps even taking a step further, ASUS could add that it mimics the colors on the screen and displays that at the back against the wall. That would kind of take it just a step too far, but I think it would look really cool. Now the monitor's lighting is an Aura Sync enabled, which allows you to sync all of your Aura enabled devices together like your GPU, motherboard, fans and so on to get a cool in sync lighting effect through all of your devices. But now getting into the gaming experience and the first thing you might ask is can you see the difference between 165Hz and normal 144Hz refresh rates? And in all honest opinion, I couldn't really see the difference. Even between the 240Hz ASUS PG258Q and the basic VG248Q, which is our 144Hz monitor, there was a minimal increase that I could see. Now, I'm not a pro FES player or anything like that. Pro players, I might be able to see a much more of a difference between the two. But from just an average gamer, it wasn't really that drastic. I like the difference between between the 60 Hertz and the 144 Hertz. So that 21 Hertz increase won't be that major of a factor, but the 1440p with that high refresh rate it does make it very enjoyable for gaming if you can get that high of a frame rate with throughout all of your games. The smoothness and the high resolution really enhances your gaming experience and combining that with the cool design and then also that nice thin bezels, it just makes it stand out that much more. As for the RGB, that depends more on where you actually place the monitor. If, again, you put it against the wall, you can't really see that. But if it's more of an open design, then you can see the backside. That looks just really nice and it just enhances everything again. But now overall, the PG27VQ is a great gaming monitor with the looks and the performance, everything in one. 
It is a somewhat expensive, but it is a mix of high resolution and a high refresh rate. So if that's what you want to go for, the PG27 VQ is going to be perfect for you. But now that's pretty much it for this review of the PG27 VQ. First up, I just want to thank you, Asus of Africa, for sending over the PG27 VQ for this review. Also, if you guys want to get the PG27 VQ for yourself, you can follow the links in the video description where you can get it on Rebeltech if you live in South Africa and then Amazon if you live uh, the US or the UK or somewhere like that. But with all of that being said, I do hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please like, share, comment, comment like always. Or if you want me to review anything else, drop me a comment down below and I will try to get my hands on that. But anyway, thanks for watching guys and I will check all of you next time. Cheers guys.